Okay, this is uh, Baskaran uh, here again. Uh, now I'm going to discuss about complications of uh, sinusitis. As you can see in this table, um, I like this one. This is um, uh, much simplified and it's quite easy to remember. So they divided the complications of sinusitis as orbital, intracranial, bony, and chronic. In this, I'm going to talk about bony and uh, bony complications and uh, mucopiosal. Uh, I'm sure you might have, uh, you might be thorough with the periorbital cellulitis. This is one topic is really, really important, which can be asked either in the pediatric section or in the rhinology. Um, so I, you know, there's one topic that you really need to be very thorough. So bony complications, uh, we'll look at the frontal osteomyelitis, otherwise it's called as a Watts puffy tumor. Maybe even a clinical picture or a CT scan, and so and then the discussions, you know, uh, might go from there. Um, so the frontal osteomyelitis is um, is um, is a manifestation of either an acute or a chronic frontal sinusitis. As you may know, the frontal bone, the anterior table, is a diploid bone with a marrow cavity. <clears throat> In an acute frontal sinusitis, the infection might spread into the subperiosteal region through the, um, through the blood vessels. In a chronic frontal sinusitis, there'll be an, uh, there'll be an erosion of the frontal anterior table of the frontal uh, sinus, and the, um, the pus might collect, and it can show up in the forehead, as you can see in the uh, clinical photograph. Again, the presentation uh, will depend either uh, depending on the uh, acute or the chronic uh, frontal sinusitis. In an acute in an acute sinusitis, patient will be toxic. They'll be you know they'll have uh, fever, headache, and uh, they may have uh, other um, manifestations like periorbital cellulitis or an intracranial um, complication. So it's very important to when you're assessing the patient. It's important to assess the signs and symptoms of uh, any uh, meningeal, any intracranial uh, pathology. In a chronic frontal sinusitis, the Pott's puffy tumor, uh, if it's left for too long, the skin might break down and the patient may have a chronic discharging uh, fistula. So the imaging modality, I think I would get both CT and MRI scan. The CT scan is to show um, the anatomy of the frontal sinuses, and the MRI scan to see is there any intracranial involvement. Often they may have an erosion of the posterior table, and they can have a subdural or an epidural abscess. Um, so it's important to uh, get both scans. Um, if it's an acute frontal sinusitis, um, to admit them, and you know, uh, it's a, it's, uh, it's an, uh, a clinical emergency which needs to be managed with uh, IV antibiotics and uh, topical decongestants. And you may want to send a bus for culture sensitivity. If there's no improvement with the medical management, you may want to consider a surgery. Again, this depends on the presentation. Uh, in an acute frontal sinusitis, you may want to decompress uh, the pus from the frontal sinus. It can be done uh, by a frontal definition. And also, if there is any forehead subperiosteal collection, which can be drained by making a small external uh, incision. If there is a, uh, if this is due to the chronic sinusitis, is often uh, there, there may be uh, an obstruction at the frontal. Uh, sinus outflow tract, so they may need a draft procedure, commonly uh, low modified Lothrop procedure. If there, is any, if there is an extensive destruction of the anterior table of the frontal sinus, they may need an osteopla osteoplastic flap to um, remove the, um, remove the um, dead bone, and they may need obliteration or a cranialization procedure. The second topic is the frontoethmoidal mucosal. As you might have come across, the mucus starts accumulating in, uh, accumulating in the sinuses. 
and which is more common in the frontal sinus. And um, there's typically an obstruction at the frontal uh, obstruction at the sinus drainage. This could be due to newborn formation, polyps, previous surgery, or uh, tumor. The mucosal um, the mucus will collect and this will slowly expand. It thins the bone and uh, expands into the surrounding structures, more commonly into the eye because the bone, uh, the floor of the frontal sinus uh, bone is thin and which can easily uh, uh, extend into the orbital cavity and uh, causes displacement of the eyeball or, the, or it can cause erosion of the anterior and posterior table of the frontal sinus. Often patients are uh, not aware of uh, the problem because uh, it's, a, it's a slowly an expanding, uh, slow, uh, because of it's a slowly an expanding uh, pathology, but they can present acutely because of a superadded infection, which can cause like a pyosil. So they need CT and MRI scan to assess the anatomy and also assess the um, intracranial involvement. The management uh, depends on the presentation. If it's an acute presentation, they will require IV antibiotics and decongestants. If it's a chronic uh, muco, uh, mucosil, they'll, they'll require a proper uh, planned endoscopic drainage of the, um, of the involved sinuses. Uh, in the frontal sinus, they may require a modified Lothrop procedure. If it's an acute pyosil, um, uh, in an, in an acute biosil, they may need uh, decompression of the uh, pus from the sinuses. And once the infection is controlled, then um, the endoscopic sinus surgery can be planned in, in future to, uh, to prevent uh, further mucosal uh, formation. Thank you, hope this is uh, helpful. Thanks, Jay.